From Southern Colorado's High Definition News Leader, this is News Channel 13, where the news comes first. Next on Good Morning Colorado, an investigation is underway after a man was shot and killed in a small town. We're live where it happened this morning with more on what we know. Health officials are on alert after a nurse tested positive for the Ebola virus. It could be the first transmission of the virus in the U.S. Plus, ballots are heading to your mailbox for the state's first vote-by-mail general election. We'll let you know what to expect when you receive yours this week. And after two weeks of delay, the city of Aurora will have its first recreational marijuana shop today. We'll take you inside the new tech-savvy shop. Good morning, Colorado. It's 6 a.m. now on this Monday, October the 13th. I'm John Carroll. And I'm Brittany Bailey. A little bit of a cool start, but nothing unexpected. We are in October, right? That's how it goes here in Colorado. The winds have died down. Well, they kicked up uh, they with did. a vengeance yesterday. And they kept turning my motion lights on and off outside. <laughs> so, but yeah, this morning, not so bad. We'll send things over to Storm Tracker 13's Abby Oconee for your weather on the ones at 601. Yeah, good morning, everyone. We are tracking some breezy conditions in parts of southern Colorado today, but definitely conditions are calmer than yesterday overall, which is good news. Dry conditions, although on the chilly side, Take a look. We're even chillier than 50 degrees at Powers and Galley in Colorado Springs. This is from our overhead door neighborhood weather network camera. Just some lights there in the background. Mostly clear skies, what we're working with during these morning hours. Temperatures are in the 30s and in the 40s out toward the eastern plains, up and down the I 25 corridor. 20s in place out toward the mountain locations. So you may want to grab the jacket as you step outdoors. Those wind speeds are in the teens for Colorado Springs. 20s Lyman out toward Burlington with the teens for La Junta, Lamar, 28 mile per hour winds in Springfield. And we do have a wind advisory that's in place until 6 o'clock for the northeastern plains out toward Kansas. So we could see some blowing dust and some lowered visibilities throughout this time period because of these gusty winds up to 50 miles an hour. Your live HD Doppler radar not picking up any sort of real stormy activity for us. And your skycast will show some very minimal activity. In fact, we're really going to have an absence of systems and storms today, even through the next several days. Your seven day forecast is looking oh so good with mostly sunny. Skies in place throughout southern Colorado. Highs today ranging in the 50s and in the 60s. 58 for Colorado Springs, 62 for Pueblo. We will have details on the temperature rebound to come coming up in a bit. John and Brittany, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Abby. The Lincoln County Sheriff's Office needs your help in finding a missing man. 75 year old Gene Ostrander of Araba was last seen by a friend on Friday. The Sheriff's Office says he does not have a car and is showing signs of dementia. Now, this is the most recent picture of Ostrander, who's now sporting a beard that's possibly dyed brown. If you see him, you're asked to call police. A family in Rocky Ford is looking for answers after family members say a police officer barged in and shot a man. The victim's family says Jack Hawkins was shot and killed after they say a police officer shot him in the back. This happened yesterday at a home near Swink Avenue and 3rd Street in Rocky Ford, which is about an hour east of Pueblo. That's where we find Cardio News Channel 13's Bonnie Silkman this morning. She joins us there live to begin our top six at six. Good morning, Bonnie. Brittany and John, a family is waiting for answers this morning from the district attorney's office as this investigation continues. Now, I'm here right in front of the home where all of this took place yesterday. It's very dark out, but if you look carefully behind me, you can see the caution tape is still all here. It's a very fam unfamiliar sight in such a quiet or normally quiet town here in Rocky Ford. Now, the Colorado Bureau of Inve Investigation is looking into this case. The victim's sister in law says Hawkins came home around 2 a.m. Sunday morning. Then she says a police officer came through the front door. She says she heard the men shouting and then a gun went off. Now, the officer who fired that gun has been put on administrative leave during this investigation. Now, as that investigation continues, and of course, detectives are trying to figure out what exactly happened before that gunfire went off. Okay. It's sad because. My grandfather was a cop, and now you don't really know who you can trust anymore. I mean, it's great to have them to protect us and stuff, but it's a whole other story when they're the ones that are doing the killing. Now, once again, that was the victim's sister-in-law who we spoke to yesterday. She's obviously very upset, and once again, her family is waiting for answers. We are expected to learn more from the district attorney's office as the CBI investigates this officer-involved shooting, and we'll, of course, keep you updated as soon as we learn more. For now, reporting live, Bonnie Silkman, Caradio News Channel 13.
Bonnie, thanks. Looking ahead this morning, we'll learn more today about a drug bust in Monte Vista. Police discovered more than 11 pounds of methamphetamine after a traffic stop on Friday. The street value of the drugs is more than half a million dollars. Police will give an update this afternoon on the investigation, including details on the arrests of suspects. Pueblo police are asking the victims of a couple of attempted carjackings to help them with the investigation. Police were first called to the 1700 block of Erie yesterday morning on a report of a stolen truck belonging to Arbuck Heating and Air Conditioning. The owner of the truck was able to track it using GPS, leading police to the 1000 block of Fear Now, where police say they saw two men unloading tools from the utility box. A 33 year old Michael Martinez was immediately arrested. The second suspect, 24 year old Anthony Vallejos, was arrested later after he tried to stop three cars in an attempt to escape. Police are asking the drivers of those cars to call them at 553-2502. The CDC is working to confirm an Ebola diagnosis in Dallas. A nurse who treated a Liberian man tested positive in a preliminary test for the virus. If the test is accurate, it would mark the first ever transmission of the deadly virus in the United States. Andrew Spencer reports to continue our top six at six. More than 4,000 people have died in the Ebola outbreak, and the World Health Organization says at least one in every 20 has been a healthcare worker. The Ebola virus is now believed to have spread for the first time in the United States to a nurse at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital. She had helped treat Thomas Eric Duncan, the Liberian man who died at the Dallas hospital last week. At some point, there was a breach in protocol, and that breach in protocol resulted in this infection. The case is similar to one at a hospital in Spain, where a nurse's assistant became the first person to contract Ebola outside Africa. We know how to stop Ebola from spreading in hospitals, but that doesn't mean it's easy. It's hard. It means you need meticulous attention to detail. That level of detail isn't always present in West Africa, where the vast majority of healthcare workers have been infected, including Americans Dr. Rick Sacra, Nancy Wrightball, and Dr. Kent Brantley. As some workers threaten to strike over the conditions they're working with, some survivors of the Ebola virus have stepped forward to help the sick. We cannot contract the virus again, so we can do this. We have to go in there to help a fellow Liberian citizen. In Atlanta, I'm Andrew Spencer, KRDO News Channel 13. Well, election Day is less than a month away, and changes await Colorado voters. Ballots are being mailed out today for Colorado's first vote by mail general election. KRDO News Channel 13, Zach Pagano joins us live at our newsplex with more in this year's election to continue our top six at six. Good morning, Zach. Good morning, Brittany and John. Colorado voters don't have to wait until the first Tuesday in November to vote this year. If you're registered, you can make your voice heard using a pen and your couch. The clerk and recorder's office is mailing ballots to El Paso and Pueblo County voters today. Election officials recommend visiting your county's website to make sure you are registered at your current mailing address. The ballot includes races for federal, state, and county offices, along with various state and local questions and issues. El Paso County's ballot includes questions about increasing funding to trails and parks, the creation of a regional stormwater authority board, and creating a term limit of two consecutive four-year terms for the sheriff. Pueblo County voters will decide on retail marijuana taxes and tax increases to fund public safety measures and pension plans for the rural fire district. Now, same day registration still exists, and voters can register and then vote on Election Day. There will be drop off locations in each county. Live in the Newsplex, Zach Pagano, KRDO News Channel 13. Zach, thank you. The Denver Broncos star quarterback is just two touchdown passes shy of an NFL record. The Broncos took on the New York Jets yesterday, beating them 31 to 17. Peyton Manning threw three touchdown passes, bringing his career total to 506. Manning targeted the two Thomases for those passes, Julius and Demarius. The Jets had a chance to tie the game with less than a minute left, but Akib Talib intercepted the ball and returned it for a ceiling touchdown. New York has now lost five straight games. We'll have more highlights from the game ahead in the KRDO News Channel 13 power block. And uh, the outcome was a little iffy at times, I thought. The first quarter, 
Broncos didn't look too good. Then. Well, I never doubted them. Oh. Come on, John Carroll. I'm just saying. Uh, well, that was those were your top six at six stories. Time now, 6.09, Abby. And we are tracking some breezy conditions throughout Southern Colorado today, along with some relatively cool daytime temperatures. As a quick aside for you, coming up this weekend, all the storm trackers will be at the Pikes Peak Public Library, room 21C, from 10 to 2. We love to sign some weather books, hand them out, which, by the way, we are distributing to all fifth graders throughout Southern Colorado. Coming up in your full forecast, we'll have details on the rebound in those temperatures. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back to Good Morning Colorado, everyone, and happy Monday. Hope it's off to a wonderful start for you. We are cooking up some mild and dry conditions throughout your Monday, along with some breezy wind conditions as well. Just as a heads up for those of you who, you know, are still trying to plan your upcoming weekend, all the storm trackers will be at Pikes Peak Public Library 21C from 10 to 2. And those current temperatures outside right now, not all too roasty toasty. In the upper 30s right now for Colorado Springs, lower 40s for Pueblo, 30s and 40s for the rest of the eastern plains with the 20s in place out toward the mountains. So load on a few extra layers as you step outdoors, but skip the umbrella. Dry conditions all around. Those wind speeds are in the teens for Colorado Springs. Double digits for Trinidad in the 20s. Lyman out toward Burlington with the teens in La Junta and Lamar. We do have a wind advisory that's in effect for the northeastern plains out toward Kansas. Everyone shaded in that tan color. Again, until 6 o'clock tonight, could see some blowing dust concerns, lowering visibility at times because of just that. Live HD Doppler radar not showing a lot of activity for us. Really minimal stuff going on. Not even a whole lot in terms of cloud cover. Take a look at your skycast. We spin this forward into the next 12 or so hours. Not a whole lot going on, everyone. A pretty quiet day. Quite a contrast compared to what we saw over the weekend. In Colorado Springs, upper 50s today, lower 70s by Tuesday. Those temperatures starting to bump up just a tad in the lower 60s for highs today. In Pueblo, upper 70s by Tuesday. Tuesday, so not all too bad, and I think you're going to love the 70 forecast. We've got loads of sunshine, blue sky for you, and warm daytime temperatures too. It's going to be great. And if you're wondering how we roll, mm -hmm. we have muffins from Brittany so and bad. brownies from Abby. Uh, apparently, That's right. we need to coordinate the baked <laughs> I think goods, we do. <laughs> or we just, you know, overwhelm with them. Whatever. But it's good, delicious. Yeah. And I had there were three muffins. And they're raspberry, right? Raspberry muffins and chocolate brownies, and I licked them all, so those are all mine. Oh, excellent. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'll steal from you. Thanks, Abby. <laughs> yep. Well, today is Columbus Day. While well, some will celebrate the Explorer today, others will be protesting the meaning of the holiday. Up next, we'll tell you what they're supporting instead. Ahead in the KRDO News Channel 13, Power Block, an Olympian could learn today whether he'll go to prison for killing his girlfriend.
Welcome back to Good Morning Colorado. We're tracking a little of that dawn's early light from our neighborhood weather network camera in Peyton, where uh, winds not too bad compared to some of the winds we saw yesterday. And 42 degrees right now at 617. Looking ahead this morning, the Sons of Italy are planning to pay off their annual homage to explorer Christopher Columbus in Pueblo today. This is video from last year's festivities, the wreath laying at the foot of the statue of Columbus. We'll start at 10 this morning in the Mesa Junction. It's expected to bring crowds of Hispanic and Native American protesters who say the arrival of Columbus hurt their cultures. Well, for the first time this year, Seattle and Minneapolis will recognize this holiday as Indigenous Peoples Day. The cities join a growing list of jurisdictions choosing to shift the focus from Columbus to the people he encountered in the New World. And we want to hear from you this morning about this. What do you think about the celebration of Columbus Day? Comment at KRDO.com. Log on to Facebook or Twitter at KRDO News Channel 13. If you filled up your gas tank recently, you may have noticed lower prices. Plus, 30 years after the release of Ghostbusters, there's a new version of the theme song. Get this stuck in your head. ABC's <laughs> TJ Holmes has the details in America's Money. Good morning. Topping America's money, much lower gas prices. The average price of a gallon of regular this morning is $3.20. That's more than 20 cents less than a month ago. In some areas, gas is already well below $3. The stock markets are open this morning, even though it's Columbus Day. Last week's roller coaster wiped out all the Dow's gains for the year. Analysts expect more swings in the weeks to come. Gone Girl is not going anywhere just yet. Still number one at the box office. Did about $27 million in business over the weekend. Dracula Untold. Brought in about 24 million, and Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day had a not so terrible weekend with 19 million. And to promote the 30th anniversary release of Ghostbusters, we're getting a new version of the theme song on a record that smells like a marshmallow. Yes, a marshmallow. You'll remember the movie's villain was the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. That's America's Money. I'm TJ Holmes. Just tell us your.
Welcome back to Good Morning Colorado, everyone. Storm Tracker 13's Abby Oconee in the Weather Center with you on this a marvelous Monday morning. I want to show you one of our neighborhood weather network camera shots from the Bent County Courthouse, Los Animas at U.S. Highway 50, where temperatures are in the 40s and wind speeds are in the teens. As John likes to say, Don's morning light, is that how we call it around here? Anyways, just looking simply gorgeous this early morning. Right now, those temperatures are in the 30s and in the 40s with the 20s out toward the mountain locations. Worth loading on the layers this morning, that's for sure. The temperature difference as of just 24 hours ago, looking in the teens for Colorado Springs, some of the teens out toward the mountain locations, as well as Lyman, but the rest of the area is looking pretty similar to what we saw yesterday. Those wind speeds are going to make those already cool daytime temperatures feel just that much cooler. In the teens for Colorado Springs, 20s Lyman out toward Burlington with the teens for La Junta and Lamar. We do have a wind advisory that is in place for the northeastern plains for Burlington out toward Kansas as well. Until 6 o'clock, could see some Blowing dust issues and lowered visibility throughout the day. Just as a heads up, there gusts up to 50 miles an hour. As you can tell, live HD Doppler radar not showing a lot of activity for us. What it is picking up on right now isn't actually true stormy activity. So, really pretty bone dry throughout the area. Mostly sunny skies are anticipated with some high pressure building throughout the midweek. Your skycast in the next 48 hours not showing a lot of activity for us. In fact, we'll just fast forward through that bad boy. We've got loads of sunshine ahead for us. Highs today only reach. In the 50s and the 60s, 58 for Colorado Springs, 62 for Pueblo, 50s and 60s out toward the eastern plains with the 40s and the 50s expected for the mountain locations. Because of all the quiet weather, we do have a low impact to your travel commute this morning and later on tonight. Here's that seven day forecast. Those temperatures make a great rebound. If I do say so myself, landing us in the lower 70s by Tuesday, upper 70s by Wednesday, making it the warmest day of the week. Over the weekend, we'll start to cool things down on Friday, but those temperatures start. Starting to boost just a tad Saturday and Sunday. In Pueblo, take a look upper 70s by tomorrow with the lower 80s by Wednesday and 70s will stay the rest of the way. Just a gorgeous looking 70 forecast, everyone, with those overnight temperatures in the 30s and 40s in Canyon City. 75 tomorrow's high, 80 on Wednesday with the upper 60s by Friday with that slight cool down like we mentioned, but not a lot in the way of moisture precipitation. In Tela County, 46 today's high. Overnight temperatures down into the 20s. May see an increase in cloud cover Thursday and Sunday as a result of some weak cold fronts, but not a lot of moisture associated with those either. But, you know, for being an uneventful week, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. So get outside, enjoy it, soak it up. It's going to be wonderful. Enjoy fall. Uh, enjoy fall. For as long as it lasts. Right. <laughs> Who knows how long that'll be? That's right. Thanks, Abby. You're welcome. Now we're going to check back in with Mike Lewis at KRDO News Radio for Time Saver Traffic. Hi, Mike. Hey, good morning. Thank you. 624 on your Monday morning. We are seeing. Picking up building volume up and down I-25 right now. This is Bijou and I-25. We are accident-free at the moment. That's good news. Again, because of the Columbus Day holiday, a lot of folks do have a three-day weekend, so volume is down from what we normally see this time of the day. We'll continue to track things. Remember, we have that ongoing construction at Platt and Academy, and it's really affecting Platt now more than Academy. Another report in 15 minutes. Have a good day. John and Brittany, back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Mike. There is an investigation underway in Maine after a Halloween themed hayride turned deadly. Investigators are blaming a mechanical problem for the crash that killed a teenager and hurt more than 20 others. The wagon careened down a hill in the woods Saturday night and hit a tree. The state fire marshal's office says it appears the Jeep towing the trailer had some sort of problem that prevented the driver from stopping. At a New Hampshire farm, a gust of wind blew an inflatable bounce house up into the air while two children were playing in it. The bouncy house hadn't been tethered down properly, and hay bales were set in front to show it was not in use. But two children hopped in, not knowing it wasn't ready to be used. Witnesses say the bouncy house cleared a 10 foot fence and came down hard more than 50 feet away. The two children were hurt. One is in critical condition. Winter is on the way, but how prepared are we for the cold weather? You'll talk to some people who are ready for the season and others who think it's a little too soon for snow. Coming up in sports, Peyton Manning was just five touchdowns away from tying Brett Favre's mark of 508 career touchdown passes. He moved three closer. We'll have the highlights later in sports.
From Southern Colorado's High Definition News Leader, this is News Channel 13, where the news comes first. Welcome back to Good Morning Colorado, everyone. It is 629. I'm Brittany Bailey. And I'm John Carroll. Winter is coming faster than some of us care to admit. While our storm trackers predicted the snow, some of us stay in denial until it actually hits us. So are we ready for another year of old man winter? Well, KRDO News Channel 13's Greg Miller hit some slushy streets to find out. This is Colorado, home of America's mountain. And I promise the camera is actually pointed towards that mountain. But this white stuff on cars still caught some of us off guard. Definitely a surprise, but I'm ready for it to start dropping some snow. Seems a little early still, but... <laughs> so why? After all, we're known for our winter sports. It's inspiring. I love seeing this cold weather coming in. It gets people jazzed up, getting people their skis getting tuned. Um, my guess is we'll see one of the ski areas opening up probably in a week and a half. Maybe it's the sudden change in weather. It was interesting. It was uh, quite a change of pace from the last few days. Uh... But that's normal too. Colorado averages two and a half inches of snow in the month of October. The average temperature is about 49 degrees. While some of us were surprised, others have been waiting for this change. Love to kind of have that average winter where we have a really good snowpack, but some good powder every now and then too. So I'm hoping for average. With snow apps making predictions for ideal ski seasons easier, a lot of people have already started gearing up. Even if this weekend snow caused many problems on our highways, and for those who are not into the slopes, a decent fisherman. I just like uh, taking hikes, going to the outdoors, and. Uh, elk hunting. I leave on Friday to go out elk hunting this week. Even if it was a surprise, doesn't look like it will take long for us to use these flakes to our advantage. Greg Miller, KRDO News Channel 13. And as you saw, the snow didn't spare the mountain areas. This is what it looked like on I-70 between Silverthorne and Vail. The storm caused the interstate to shut down in both directions for several hours yesterday morning. And as pretty as the snow is, I'm not looking forward to driving in that stuff. No, I think those folks weren't quite ready to drive in it yet <laughs> uh, with those problems there. We will send things over now to Storm Tracker 13's Abby Oconee for your weather on the ones at 631. Good morning, everyone. We are tracking, thankfully, calm conditions compared to the weekend. We've got loads of sunshine in store for you, along with some cooler than average daytime temperatures. I do want to show you one of our neighborhood weather network cameras from 16th Street in Grand Ave from our Parkview Medical Center camera there. You can see some of the blues, the hints, the oranges, and yellows on the horizon, just looking so beautiful on this Monday morning. As an aside, save the day. Quick heads up, we are distributing all of our weather books to fifth graders throughout Southern Colorado, but all the storm trackers will be at the Pikes Peak Public Library 21C this Saturday from 10 to 2. So come on out. We would love to meet you um, and show you our weather book as well. Those temperatures currently are ranging in the 30s and in the 40s with the 20s out toward the mountain location. So off to a cold start. Make sure you do load on the layers of morning. We're also keeping our eye on those wind speeds expected to cause minor problems today in the 20 mile per hour zone Lyman through Burlington in the teens right now for Colorado Springs as well as La Junta and Lamar. That wind advisory for the northeastern plains out toward Kansas lasting all the way through 6 o'clock. Blowing dust, lower visibility may cause some concerns today. We are tracking some cooler than average daytime temperatures and a rebound on the way. Details coming up in a bit. John and Brittany, back to you. Thanks, Abby. 632 now. The war in Vietnam brought them together, and life later kept them apart. We'll show you the moment that these two reunited after decades of separation. Plus, loved ones in Rocky Ford are looking for answers after an officer involved shooting. We'll bring the latest information on the investigation next on Good Morning Colorado. Time now, 633.
Welcome back to Good Morning Colorado on this Monday. Our Neighborhood Weather Network camera at Dutch Heritage Gardens. Looking out over the Palmer Divide there, you see the clouds in the sky. Things are pretty calm and cool on this Monday morning to start your week. 6.37 now. Three swimmers in California ran into some trouble and had to be rescued off cliffs. The swimmers got stuck yesterday after large waves began to pummel them, trapping them in a cave. Lifeguards had to use a big rig to hoist them back up the steep cliffs. All three swimmers are expected to be okay. Although jumping from the cliffs is illegal, they will not be cited because they were not caught in the act. A war first brought them together, but life pulled them apart. Joe Martinez and Rick Mueller met as shipmates during the war in Vietnam when they were teenagers. They called themselves M&M. &M. Now they're in their 60s and their bond hasn't changed. But for 43 years, the two weren't able to find each other. Each one tried finding the other, but with no success. Finally, Joe wrote a letter that found its way to Rick's store in Minnesota. I heard his voice. He's, is this Joe Martinez? Rick! <laughs> you could just feel love over the airways. Now, this is video of the happy reunion. Rick flew out to Joe's North Glen home this weekend. One of Joe's family members ultimately found Rick through an online search. And Happy reunion there. Love to see those for sure. Abby. Good morning, everyone. We are tracking cooler than average daytime temperatures today, starting things off on the cool side as well in the 30s and the 40s throughout Southern Colorado with the 20s, what we're dealing with up in the mountain locations. We will have details on just when we'll ramp up this cold snap. That's coming up after the break.
Welcome back to Good Morning Colorado, everyone. It is 641 on this Monday morning. Hope it's off to a great start for you. We are cooking up some quiet and mild weather conditions for you today. Drier all around with some breezy winds and some cooler than average daytime temperatures. Take a look. Parkview Medical Center Neighborhood Weather Network camera showing off this morning. Look at those blue skies there in the background. Oh boy, don't let it fool you though. Temperatures are on the cool side in the mid 40s right now. Temperatures are in the upper 30s, lower 40s throughout Southern Colorado. Colorado with the 20s in place out toward the mountain locations worth grabbing the jacket as you step outdoors. As for how these temperatures are faring compared to what we saw just 24 hours ago, take a look. 14 degree difference for Colorado Springs, 10 degrees for Lyman, 11 for Trinidad, but the rest of the area looking pretty good. Those wind speeds are in the teens right now for Colorado Springs. 20s Lyman through Burlington with La Junta, Lamar in the teens there as well. Upper 20s for Springfield. So we do have a wind advisory that's in place for the northeastern plains. Also out toward Kansas. So if you're heading up, up and down, or east to west on I-25 today, be prepared for some lowered visibility. We could see some blowing dust in that area as those gusty conditions, oh boy, up to 50 miles an hour possible. So a, kind of a blustery kind of day. Hang on to your hats, everybody, and it's going to make those temperatures feel a bit cooler, just as a reminder. Okay, Abby, thanks. You're welcome. Now we'll check back in with Mike Lewis at KRDO News Radio for Time Saver Traffic. Hi, Mike. Hey, good morning. Thank you. On this Monday morning approaching 6:43, we are still accident-free in the Springs area, but volume has really picked up across Colorado Springs. This is the east side, Powers and Stetson Hills that we're showing you right now. Uh, volume not as high as it normally would be on a Monday because a lot of folks do have today off for Columbus Day holiday. Another report in about 15 minutes. We still have a lot of construction going as well. Update you on that next. John and Brittany, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Mike. And you can always check your morning commute, by the way, on our website, KRDO.com. Just click on the traffic tab. You can also get all of your news headlines there 24 7. Time now, 6 43. We'll be back with the KRDO News Channel 13 Power Block.
This is the KRDO News Channel 13 Power Block. 13 minutes of nonstop news and weather, commercial free for you. Family members in Rocky Ford are looking for answers after they say a police officer barged in and shot a man. The victim's family says Jack Hawkins was shot and killed after they say a police officer shot him in the back. This happened yesterday at a home near Swink Avenue and 3rd Street in Rocky Ford. That's about an hour east of Pueblo. That's where we find KRDO News Channel 13's Bonnie Silkman this morning. She joins us there live to begin our top six at six. Good morning, Bonnie. Brittany and John, good morning. A family is waiting for many answers this morning after this shooting took place right here. We are right in front of the home where this took place yesterday. And if you take a look behind me, it's still a little dark out, but you can see the caution tape is still surrounding the entire property of where this took place as this investigation continues. This is a very unfamiliar site for such a normally quiet town here in Rocky Ford. Now, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation is looking into this case. The victim's sister-in-law says Hawkins came home around 2 a.m. Sunday morning. Then she says a police officer came through the front door. She says the men shouted and then a gun went off. Now, the officer who fired that gun is being put on administrative leave as this investigation continues. Now, we were told by the district attorney's office that we should be getting more answers and an update on this investigation. We'll, of course, let you know what that update is as soon as we learn more. We're going to continue to follow and track this story for you. But for now, reporting live, Bonnie Silkman, KRDO News Channel 13. Bonnie, thank you. Looking ahead this morning, we'll learn more today about a drug bust in Monta Vista. Police discovered more than 11 pounds of methamphetamine after they did a traffic stop on Friday. The street value of the drugs is more than half a million dollars. Police will give an update this afternoon on the investigation, including details on the arrest of suspects. Pueblo police are asking the victims of a couple of attempted carjackings to help them with the investigation. Police were first called to the 1700 block of Erie yesterday morning on a report of a stolen truck belonging to Arbuck Heating and Air Conditioning. The owner of the truck was able to track it using GPS, leading police to the 1000 block of Fear Now, where police say they saw two men unloading tools from the utility box. 33-year-old Michael Martinez was immediately arrested. The second suspect, 24-year-old Anthony Vallejos, was arrested later after he reportedly tried to stop three cars trying to escape. Police are asking the drivers of those cars to call them. The CDC is working to confirm an Ebola diagnosis in Dallas. The virus is now believed to have spread for the first time in the United States to a nurse at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital. She had helped treat Thomas Eric Duncan, the Liberian man who died at the hospital. The case is similar to one at a hospital in Spain, where a nurse's assistant became the first person to contract Ebola outside Africa. 6.49 now. Election Day is less than a month away, and El Paso and public counties are sending out their ballots. This November marks the first vote-by-mail election in Colorado. KRDO News Channel 13's Zach Pagano joins us live in our Newsplex with more on what's on that ballot to continue our top six at six. Good morning, Zach. Good morning. The El Paso and Pueblo County ballots include races for federal, state, and county offices, along with various state and local questions and issues. Appearing on both ballots is the Amendment 67 question, the so-called personhood initiative. If approved, the measure would include unborn babies under the definition of person in the Colorado Criminal Code. There are also ballot questions about retail marijuana in Pueblo, Manitou Springs, and Palmer Lake. Ballots must be returned by 7 on election night, November 4th. Postmark ballots received after that deadline cannot be counted. You can also hand deliver your ballot if you don't think yours will make it in time in the mail. There will be drop off locations in each county. Of course, same day registration still exists, and voters can register and then vote on election day. Live in the Newsplex, Zach Pagano, KRDO News Channel 13. The Denver Broncos star quarterback is just two touchdown passes shy of an NFL record. The Broncos took on the New York Jets yesterday, beating them 31 to 17. Peyton Manning threw three touchdown passes, bringing his career total to 506. Manning targeted the two Thomases for those passes, Julius and Demarius. The Jets had a chance to tie the game with less than a minute left, but Aqib Tlaib intercepted the ball and returned it for a touchdown. New York has now lost five straight games.
Those were your top six at six stories. Time now, 651. Time for a check of weather on the ones. So we go over to Storm Tracker 13's Abby Aconi. Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. Hope it's off to a marvelous start for everyone. We are tracking quiet and mild conditions throughout southern Colorado. Well, except for the chilly temperatures right now, 40 degrees at Woodland Park. This is from our Greater Woodland Park Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center Neighborhood Weather Network camera. Well, it looks like roads are dry. Drivers are starting up that morning commute. Those temperatures are in the upper 30s, lower 40s right now, with the 20s right now out toward the mountain locations. Load on a few layers, everyone, as you step outdoors. On this Monday. Those wind speeds are in the teens right now for Colorado Springs, double digits for Trinidad with the 20s alignment out toward Burlington on I 70 with the teens for La Junta and Lamar, upper 20s for Springfield. We do have a wind advisory that's in place for the northeastern plains along with Kansas, and that lasts until 6 o'clock. Some blowing dust and lowered visibility could become some issues later on as we are tracking some of those gusts up to around 50 miles an hour. Here's your live HD Doppler, everyone. Not a lot of activity for us. Anything that's picking up right now, no sorts of real storm activity for us and really an absence of activity going to be the name of the game on your skycast forecast models as well take a look in the next 48 hours not a whole lot going on for us mostly sunny skies dry conditions expected with that high pressure resuming in the forecast area by the middle of the work week highs today ranging in the upper 50s for Colorado Springs lower 60s for Pueblo with the 50s and 60s out toward the eastern plains and the 40s and the 50s in place out toward the mountain locations today's travel commute is a low for both this morning, later on tonight, as we don't have any sort of um, rain or um, any sort of snow to really report to you, very calm conditions. Lower 70s by Tuesday, upper 70s we go on Wednesday, making it the warmest day out of the week. Get out there and enjoy everything Southern Colorado has to offer. We do have some cooler air working throughout the region on Friday, but we'll start to boost those temperatures back pretty quickly Saturday and Sunday with a mostly sunny sky the whole way through, everyone. What a beautiful looking seven day forecast. And we're looking at 62 degrees for Pueblo. 77 by Tuesday, 83 on a Wednesday with those overnight temperatures in the 30s and in the 40s. And in Canyon City, 61 today's high, 80 by Wednesday with the 60s and the 70s throughout the remainder of the week. And in Teller County, take a look, 46 today's high overnight tonight, down to 29 degrees. And the 50s and the 60s will be for the rest of your seven day forecast. So, really got some boring and uneventful weather conditions cooked up for everyone, but it's going to be a great week. It's going to be awesome. Nothing wrong with that. Nope, Nothing we'll wrong. take uneventful. That's right. Thanks, Abby. <laughs> yep. Now we're going to check back in with Mike Lewis at Garrity Odie's Radio for Time Saver Traffic. Hi, Mike. Hey, good morning. Thank you. It's 654. We've got a couple of things that are going to slow you down depending on where you're going this morning. First of all, we'll show you Pine Creek and I-25, northern end of El Paso County. Now, if you're heading to Denver this morning, there was a construction project that was supposed to be wrapped up. They're running late. Right now, traffic from Castle Rock to Denver is running about an hour because of that construction that is not wrapped up yet. Only the left lane is open, northbound I-25 between Castle Rock and Denver. And this next thing that I'm going to tell you about just came in a couple of moments ago. We're trying to get more information. A rock slide. The exit from Highway 24 into Manitou Springs has been closed. They're telling us to take Colorado if you have to go into Manitou. We're going to try to get you more information. We'll bring it to you as soon as we can. When you head out, join us on the radio, KRDO News Radio, 105.5 FM and 1240 AM. We'll help you get where you're going. Have a great day. John and Brittany, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Mike. And happening now, former Olympic track star Oscar Vistorius is back in court this morning and could learn today whether he'll go to prison for killing his girlfriend. A judge found Vistorius not guilty of murder, but did find him guilty of the less serious charge, culpable homicide. It's similar to the American crime of manslaughter. There is no minimum or maximum sentence for the charge in South Africa. Now, Pastori shot and killed his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, on Valentine's Day last year. He has said all along he believed he was shooting an intruder, not Steenkamp. Better late than never. The first two stores licensed to sell recreational marijuana in Aurora will open this week, two weeks later than anticipated. Looking ahead this morning, Euflora will open this morning. It's a tech savvy dispensary equipped with tablets and scanners. The owner hopes the upscale feel and clear labeling will help debunk industry stereotypes. She spent one and a half million dollars converting an old bank into the shop. Uh, it's our big joke. The banks don't want us. Well, we're going to buy a bank. The city of Aurora is allowing marijuana stores to stay open three hours later than in Denver. Aurora awarded 21 licenses, but only two shops will open by the end of the week. Another will have a grand opening on Wednesday. The Denver Broncos returned to the field where they were blown out in the Super Bowl last year. It wasn't the best start to the game, but the Broncos rallied to beat the New York Jets. 
News Channel 13's Josh Williamson has the highlights in this morning's sports. Good morning. Well, the Broncos returned to MetLife Stadium yesterday not to play the Seahawks, but the Jets. Different team, same haunted field. Well, last year's first play in the Super Bowl on this field began with a safety. Yesterday, a 53-yard pass and catch from Manning to Demarius Thomas. Manning, 20 seconds to pass, and then Demarius Thomas, when you have that much time, gets wide open, takes it down to the 25-yard line, but they would have to settle for a field goal. Geno Smith and the Jets, though, would take the lead. J.C. Amaro with the touchdown catch, 7-3 Jets. Julius Thomas, he would catch two touchdowns on the afternoon, including this perfect spiral from Peyton Manning that gave the Broncos a 17-7 lead. Then Manning to Julius Thomas again. How easy is it, Julius? It's so Julius easy. Thomas. It's so easy. Love it when they're mic'd up. Then Gino Smith finds Eric Decker to cut it to a seven-point game, but the Broncos defense stiffens at the end. Akeem Tlaib, a pick six from Geno Smith. The Broncos win it by the final score of 34 to 31 to 17, rather. Manning, 237 yards and three touchdowns, and uh, he's only two more touchdowns away from tying Brett Favre. As long as the team get the win, we, we fine with that. It ain't about me or him. It's just about the team. I just want him to get the record. <laughs> I just want him to get the record. It really don't matter who it's against. I just want him to get the record because I think he deserves it. If Ronnie wants to run for four touchdowns next week, I promise you I'm, I'm in favor of that. So whatever happens along the way, you know, certainly, um, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll handle it and we'll deal with it. All right, now to the NFL. What a day it was for Joe Flacco. Four touchdowns in the first quarter. Only three quarterbacks within the last decade have done that. He throws five touchdowns on the day as the Ravens beat the Buccaneers by the final score of 48 to 17. We also have a great finish between the Fish and the Packers. Six seconds left, one play. Aaron Rodgers finds Andrew Corliss. Packers win it by the final score of 27 to 24. That is a look at your morning sports. Have a great Monday. That was the KRDO News Channel 13 Power Block. 13 minutes of commercial free, nonstop news, weather, and sports. Now, here's ABC's Amy Robach with a look at what's ahead on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up on Good Morning America, the first person infected with Ebola on American soil. Hospital officials saying the Dallas nurse was wearing full protective gear while treating Thomas Eric Duncan, and yet she still contracted the virus. Our team is live from Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital as concerns grow in that area. All next on GMA. Now we want to take a look at this morning's Wake Up Colorado picture. This is what Tia wakes up to in the morning. Hey, <laughs> I recognize those folks. And she tweeted that picture to me because I'm a Buckeye State native, an Ohio native, mm -hmm. because I don't know if you can tell, but she's wearing a Cincinnati Bearcats oh, hat hey there. there. That little C. So that's what that's about. Looking but hey, good. we love when people send in photos <laughs> like that. Thanks for waking up with us. We want to see how you wake up. Send your photos to wakeupcolorado at cardio.com. We'll be back at 724. Good morning, America is next.